Hello boys and girls, Brad the Guitologist here. In today's video we're going to take this little Fanon Masco reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder and turn it into a smoking little guitar amp. I hope you enjoy. And there is a tape with this. No idea what's on it. This one appears to be in okay shape, but it's got definitely some issues with the, uh, you can see that wheel right there, the drive wheel. It's got some cracking on that, so without replacing that wheel, this thing probably isn't gonna be all that reliable of a player. But we can see what's going on with it. What we have here, is this the microphone? Yeah, we got a microphone. Here's the plug, let's go ahead and plug it in, see what it does. hearing some buzz almost like cat buzz uh, this one has a built-in speaker so this uh -oh. all right we've got movement it's playing got a lot of buzz okay this is the motor for the for the drive mechanism and the on and off is for the amp so those are separated so that's good all right we're in monitor mode right here let me see what happens if we plug in this this has got has got some issues this little microphone okay all right oh shit man that is, that's a hot it's got to be a uh, probably crystal little crystal microphone it's hot and very low-fi check one two check check Man, that thing is, that's a hot mic. I like it, it kind of sounds, kind of sounds cool. It's got a very lo-fi quality. I bet it would be a good, uh, good little heart mic. I think I might put a new end on this. Fix it up a bit. I don't think that's quite quarter inch. Here's a quarter inch jack, and that doesn't really fit in there. That's like a different size jack. Okay, now my interest is peaked though. I want to see what, uh, I want to see about getting a signal into this, but I don't know what size of jack that it, I might just replace this jack. Let's pop this thing open. Yeah, see, you can hear it's got problems. It's just gonna need a, it's gonna need a service for sure. Um, let's get this off of here. Now we should be able to unscrew this. Let's go ahead and kill the power. I'm curious to see what kind of uh, amplifiers in this. This could be, this could be a cool little guitar amp or harp amp or something like that. I like the little box that it's in. These old machines are kind of cool, but they're not very highly sought after for their original intended purpose for playing reel-to-reel -reel tapes. They're not collectible, really, I wouldn't say. So, yeah, we got that little, so that's been, I think that's been added. Somebody might have done this on purpose so that they could do exactly what, uh, well, maybe it's been added, maybe not, though. I don't know. Okay. And, of course, all the amplifier stuff is going to be up underneath. Uh, if we want to play a tape, we could do that. We just got to lubricate all this stuff. This is all... Ooh, that... That wheel right there is kind of, that's kind of iffy. Belts seem like they're in good shape though. We've got what looks like an output jack over here. 
And the thing is too, we gotta be mindful when we pull this out that the speaker is gonna be attached still. Yeah, the same dude who sent me this also sent me a, uh, a very old Zoom, what is it? It's a, it's an old Zoom guitar effects processor unit. Uh, I'll probably show it in another video. Boy, this is one of those, they didn't want you to get it out of here. Part of the chassis is screwed onto this, this piece of wood right here, and the other end of the screw is underneath here. You have to actually peel this back to get to that screw. Uh, yeah, man, they didn't want you getting in this thing. So we gotta unscrew this, and I'm hoping that's the last screw. I don't know if I even need to. I don't even need to take that out. That's why it's that's why it's sneaky because I don't have to take that out. All right, so I'm wrong about that. What am I missing here? How do you get this son of a bitch out of here? I'll tell you what, let's let's take the back off and then we'll maybe we'll get a better idea of what's holding us up here. Okay, so the amplifier in this is a series filament little amp. It's got a 12 AV6, another 12 AV6, a 30 A5, and uh, something W4, probably a 35 W4. So, yes, this is a series filament. You can see it's Japanese. At least, I, yeah, it is Japanese made, sure is. It says it right there made in Japan but even if it didn't say it there I would be able to tell it just by looking at this board this this is classic Japanese construction from uh, you know late 60s early 70s kind of era well that's just flopping around look at that that's just flopping around in here freely is that original I guess it is oh we've got some wires over here that are bare thinking this is the output transformer right here over here we've got an output is this for speaker is this a second auxiliary out maybe I think that's a monitor out right there it says Japan on that um, I don't think that was added by someone I think that was factory there's one over here that's been removed and it's just an empty space Maybe they had two monitor speakers in parallel over there. This is a tiny, like, I don't know, six inch speaker in this thing. Here we've got a tube chart down here. And yes, indeed, that is a 35W4 rectifier. That's a 12AU6 and a 12AV6. This ought to be a this ought to be a pretty cool little amp. Okay, so we've got some screws here that are hold okay, I see how they're doing it. They've got these brackets. This bracket is attached permanently, and then we've got some screws um, attached to the bracket. So what I want to do is I want to drop the tape mechanism out of this because I don't think I'm going to use the tape mechanism at all. I think I'm going to turn this into a little guitar amp. And the tape mechanism really is just adding weight that we don't need. If it sounds cool enough, we might actually go the whole nine yards and add a little isolation transformer and all that to it. Okay, so here is the mechanism out. And I think what we're going to do here, because this motor weighs a ton, and we're not going to use this as a reel-to-reel -reel mechanism anymore. I think we may keep the appearance of a reel-to-reel -reel on the outside. We may put it all back in there and put the you know the face plate on it. When you open it up, it looks like a reel-to-reel, -reel, but the reel-to-reel -reel portion is not going to be operational. It'll just be a little amplifier. This jack right here, we have to change because it's a it's the wrong size. It's not a quarter inch jack, so we're gonna change that. Here's the bottom of the amp. And you can see the little, the board that, just a real, real kind of cheap, like I said, early Japanese board. This is the time period when, uh, you know, everybody was saying that Japanese stuff was inferior in quality. And uh, clearly it is inferior in terms of uh, when you compare 
the American stuff of the time. This is definitely inferior, but um, compared to today, at least you can, you know, you can still service this and do something with it. This thing definitely was uh, worked on before. That switch right there was installed separately. So somebody definitely was using this as kind of like a little, uh, my guess is they were using the microphone and playing, just playing around with this as a microphone amp because that allows them to switch the, uh, this motor on and off separately. Okay, so <laughs> this is really freaking odd and dangerous, what I've just found here. So the power comes in, here's the power cord. It comes in right here, it comes over to the switch. Here's the switch down here. One side of the switch goes to this transformer. Is this an isolation transformer already in this thing? I think it is. That's what it appears to be doing anyway. Yeah, because that's going to the rectifier. I think this might already be an isolation transformer. The thing is, though, we have, a, we have this switch right here that was mounted up on top. When I switched it, it was turning the motor on and off. And this red wire right here is hooked up to the motor. And this thing is bodged in here real bad. This thing is just, this is crazy. They've got this tape holding everything down. This isn't even electrical tape. It's like just it's some kind of crappy yellow tape. See the red wire down in there? It's going to one side of the motor. This black wire is going is coming from the switch. So this black wire is going through one side of the motor. This blue wire right here, which is going to it's going over to there to this transformer to one side of that. And it looks like you've got the blue and the yellow are one side of this transformer. And then you've got a black and a red on the other side. I'll have to trace out where those go. But the other side of this motor right here is coming over to here. And it's got a switch on it. The switch right here. This goes in parallel. So it takes off. So this is still... This is still 120. This is still 120 AC right here. It should be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that, dude, because that's if that's true, that's not right. Look, they put 120 across this. Is that what they've done here? Surely not. Surely not. 30 volts AC. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god dude that's madness what are they doing here this thing's going to need a complete basically rewire if we're going to use this as an amp so i have to give this some more thought but I, that right there is unbelievable to me i don't know what they're doing and look at the look at the solder job on that too this is why you, you got to be real you got to be real careful with old equipment dude you can't just you can't just plug into stuff, man, because that, look at that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's phenomenally bad. That's really bad. Oh my God. All right. So I'm going to omit that as well. That's another thing on the list. And I want to see, I want to find out what kind of transformer this is too, what, what this is doing. I think I looked online when I first, uh, open this up for a schematic and I did not find one. So let's go ahead and we'll get rid of this. The other cool thing about disassembling something like this is that you end up getting a lot of little hardware. You get some uh, bunch of screws and stuff out of the deal at the very least you know some some people might be watching this pissed off at me that I uh, am essentially destroying this as a reel to reel but this thing did not have a life before I, before I came along anyway it's not like I'm destroying something that was working if it was, if it was absolutely in working condition, I probably wouldn't mess with it. I'd, I'd leave it alone. 
as a uh, as a tape recorder, but but it's not. We've got you know all of these rubber parts, um, these wheels. See how cracked this wheel is? I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not. Can you see it? Yeah, you see the cracks in this wheel. You know, so this wheel would have to be refurbished or replaced. So that's not in good shape. The belts are in surprisingly decent shape, though. I mean, I could have gotten it to work if I'd have lubricated it and all that stuff. I could have gotten it to work as a tape player, but it wouldn't have been that useful. We're missing knobs off the top. Um, it's already been bodged by somebody, so it's not its not like it's collectible. You know, it's just an old reel-to-reel. -reel, so, But anyway, it's going to have more use as a little amplifier than it did as a reel-to-reel. -reel. These springs right here I will salvage and they might see another life in another machine. It's always good to have various springs around for different uh, projects. So we'll hold on to, we're, we're gonna hold on to all this stuff. All of this hardware is gonna go to use somewhere else, down, probably down the road. I'm not gonna throw any of it away. But see, to properly service this and lube it, I would have to remove all of these pieces. All of these would have to come off of here. And all these moving parts, I mean, it wouldn't necessarily all have to come apart but it would all have to be lubricated. But I'm gonna remove as much of the mechanism as I can because it's just gonna reduce the weight. not going to need the head assembly either um, and the input to the head assembly that might be a hotter input than the microphone input I'm not sure the other thing too is the other reason for taking all this stuff out and dispensing with it is uh, if we leave it in here it's more it, it's gonna be more prone to make noise on certain notes so all these little parts will have a tendency to possibly resonate at certain frequencies and just make noise. And we want to try to mitigate that if we can. So This was a mono. This is a single track mono recorder player. Okay, so we're back with this thing. Um, I've gone a little further on the disassembly. I've removed this big switch from it. I've removed the motor, removed almost all of the mechanism. You can see all the mechanism over there. Uh, got it down that far. And the uh, this little capacitor, I think there's two of them in here. Two, Yes, two capacitors in that. Um, those were not original to the amp. This was the original capacitor right here, and it probably is bad. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be. I've had a lot of experience 
with uh, Japanese capacitors of, of this type, and they are almost invariably bad. So uh, I'm going to replace those with some new capacitors. Um, going to have to trace out everything because I've got wires. You can see I've got wires flying here and there. The, um, the input for the... Uh, for the head, which came from that wire right there, I just removed entirely. I think they went to the same place anyway um, and were just selectable with the switch. So I've done several of these types of amplifiers, these whittle makers like this on the channel in the past. Some of them have uh, transformers to isolate the first stage that helps to reduce noise and it also helps to isolate the player's uh, fingers. This is a Sears Silvertone, and in this example, the first stage, which is a 12 AU6 in this amplifier, is being isolated on the filament with this transformer. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that if there's a short between the filament and one of the other elements inside the tube, so if you get a shorted tube, you're not going to. It's not going to put AC right on your fingers. And the isolation of the chassis ground from the B minus ground is done with a capacitor and a resistor, as in most of these types of amps. I'm still gonna probably install a an isolation transformer in this. I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna use this chassis. I think I might take these transformers and this off of this chassis and install this in something different. I'm not sure yet, I haven't decided. If I were to do that, um, I would probably make a little bit of a bigger speaker than the one that's in there, like the little six inch. This could be a cool little amp, like a little practice amp. And if you were to mic it up, it might sound huge. I've done little tiny amps like this before that sounded really, really great. But I'm kind of still in the process of designing this in my head and seeing what I want to do. So. I don't know. I might remove these transformers and this and the switch, of course. Just get it off of this chassis, which is superfluous, really. Um, the only reason to use this is if we were going to use the box that it came in. Um, and again, you know, I'm kind of contemplating that. It is in good shape. That's what this, this box has going for it. It's in good shape. You know, it's got the little uh tube chart and stuff in there and all that and like i said on the outside it's in pretty good shape and i don't know it's already got the feet on it i wouldn't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff um it's you know it's a pretty good looking little box still but the pr the problem is the limiting factor of course is that this it's got this tiny little six inch speaker now we could do another speaker out here on the side and what we could do actually is route the speaker output through a jack, that a shorted jack, so that when you plug into it, it defeats the internal speaker and you can go to an external speaker then and use this like a little head. We might consider doing that. That might be the kind of the best of both worlds approach. Um, but we are gonna need isolation transformer. And I have to see if I've got some of those left. Since this amplifier that we have has a 12 a V6 and a 12 A U6 in it. Uh, I was thinking about possibly converting it to something like this, where we're using a 12 A U6 as a first gain stage for the amplifier, and the 12 A V6, uh, just like in this example, this is a Gregory amplifier and in this example they use the 12 av6 as a tremolo but that would require me to you know i'd have to have a speed and an intensity or strength control i mean i could build this out maybe on its separate board or i don't know there might not be a real good way of doing that in this because we've got the traces and everything under there that are around that tube that would have to be cut if i wanted to make modifications so i may not do that i think in this example I think both of these are being used for gain stages, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, like I said, I don't have a schematic for this, but I think these these are both being used for gain. 
This thing has a hell of a lot of gain, but I'll have to trace it out and see what the 12AV6 is being used for. I think I did trace out where the where the input is happening, and the input is going to the 12AV6. We might just keep it as it is, but uh, I wanted to print that out and show you. We do have some options. So, okay, I'm gonna try to go ahead and remove this uh, can capacitor. The person who had replaced capacitors before had just tacked in new capacitors with these wires on top of the old one and we're not going to do that. Yeah, that whole trace is lifted. But that that was not my doing that was already done or 150 volt excuse me 150 volts 40 microfarads on each one of those we need three of them we'll go ahead and pull the tubes and probably just recap this whole thing because these capacitors are, are oil capacitors. I believe all of these are. Some of these for sure are, like that one right there for sure is, and I think this one is too. Okay, so there's the little chassis completely recapped. I'm gonna have to actually order a isolation transformer for this, so I'm not gonna be able to finish it up tonight anyway, but I'm getting a little bit closer. Okay, so I went and checked my electronic stash, and I do indeed have a couple of uh, transformers that will do the job. This one is a Triad Magnetics model N51X, and if we look at the spec sheet for this, uh, the N51X is indeed a 115 primary with a 35 volt amp rating to uh, 115 volt secondary. So it's straight across with a 0.3 amp secondary rating, which is good, should be plenty for this little guy, this little thing that we've got here. So another uh, transformer that I have in my stash is the N68, uh, but that one has the added capability of uh, transforming 230 volts down to 115 volts. So I want to save that uh, for something possibly in the future where I have to do a step down uh, transformer type operation. So. We'll use this one before we use the 68 because the 68 is overkill. We want to run the switch on the primary. So it'll go to the switch first, out of the switch, to the primary. Uh, we also want to put a fuse somewhere in that primary line and fuse that. And then on the secondary, we will move these connections that are currently on the switch over to the secondary. Okay, so skipping ahead a little bit here. Um, got some problems I'm not I'm not passing any signal and I'm also not getting any voltages on the B plus B plus should originate right here at this pin and I'm not getting anything between here and either chassis ground or the B minus um, so I've wired something wrong or something's going on I'm not sure exactly what all of the filaments seem to be lighting on the tubes when I put the tubes in here. These three are cert definitely lighting up, but the uh, V1 tube does not appear to be lighting up. I can't see any filament lighting inside of it. So I don't know if that is down to this transformer or what. This transformer is hooked up and it's definitely continuous on, the, on one side, the side that is in series with the other filaments. So this side of the transformer is definitely continuous because all of these filaments on this string are lighting up. And I'm only using this schematic for illustration purposes. This is not the schematic for, for this. Um, but I'm just showing you that, you know, you've got this big resistor in series with the filaments and this transformer. And here's the big resistor that's in series with uh, this filament, this filament, and this filament and also one side of the, this transformer. The other side of this transformer, um, I suppose the thing to do probably would be to 
disconnect this other side of the transformer now and test it for continuity. Now it was working before I started, so I, I'm assuming it's continuous and working as it should. I see no reason why it shouldn't be considering this unit was working fine before I started messing around with it. I've also, um, in an effort to troubleshoot what's going on, I've started uh, removing stuff that I know will not be necessary in this particular design. So that's gotten rid of a lot of stuff over here that I think was part of the, um, I think it was part of the recording level indicator lamp. I removed the recording level indicator lamp and any associated components. Um, removed all of those components right there that I don't think are necessary for the operation of the final design. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, just going through trying to whittle down what's necessary and what is not and see where I'm dropping signal. I'm going to have to, here in a minute, uh, plug in my signal generator and put a sine wave on the input and try to trace out where I'm dropping signal. But without voltages on the B+, plus, I mean, that should be an obvious problem. So uh, I think the first thing I'll probably want to do is whip out the tube tester and make sure that I didn't blow my um, rectifier tube because uh, if I'm not getting anything there, then that usually would point to a rectifier problem. The other problem I have is that I'm not 100% sure how this output is set up. I think, okay, so this is the primary side over here. This is the primary of the output transformer on this side. The secondary has three taps. It was, it's almost like they were using this as an inter, for like an internal speaker and then an external monitor that would have had different impedances, but I'm not sure why they would have this wire wound resistor here between one side and the uh, the center tap. The, the main issue is when you have a design like this where you have a big switch, I mean, and this is a, there's a lot going on in the switch. We've got one, two, three different wafers, and each of these wafers has one, two, three, four, five, about 12 different selections on each of those three. So what, 36 different uh, things to consider here on this one switch. So when you remove a switch like this, you, you have to backtrack and try to figure out where everything went and what was what all was being switched and where. And like I said, some of the functionality of this thing, such as the, you know, the input from the head and anything that had to do with biasing of the head is not going to be necessary in our final amplifier design. So that stuff can be omitted, which is what I've started to do with some of this stuff. And the recording indicator light and stuff like that can be omitted. So that's where we're at right now, just whittling down the stuff that's not necessary. And that's what you gotta consider when you take on a project like this, is all the little things that you haven't really thought of yet and the things that you gotta take out that are unnecessary in the final design. I did get this, uh, this transformer installed and all of it this is only here for shielding for when I uh, get this back in the cabinet because there's a piece of metal that goes right up really close uncomfortably close to this and I don't want that getting on anything so that's the only reason I had that tape there it's not trying to cover up uh, my soldering incompetence or anything like that I'm just trying to keep it from just an added layer of security from it bumping up against the piece of metal um, that would short that out and this is this piece is just holding this up here on top because I tried to fit it back in the the little cabinet earlier and uh, my ground wire kept getting caught when I would try to get it in there so to prevent that I put that there temporarily um, but yeah everything is pretty good on the power section I mean we're getting power so all this is correct so we can mark this off our checklist um, I do want to go ahead and just test the continuity of both sides of this transformer. We'll go ahead and do that and make sure that's not an issue. Um, I don't think tubes would be an issue simply because the thing was working before and I don't see me blowing a tube in just the, the one time that I've slowly powered it up since then. So, Okay, so I figured out the problem uh, with the 
no voltage on the B plus line, but now I've got another problem and uh, it's just very, very noisy. So a lot of buzz going on. Now, of course, I've got it out on the bench here. There's going to be extra buzz anytime you've got an amp out like this, but that's not the cause of this. So I'm going to have to figure out why it's doing this. And I suspect it's probably some sort of ground loop. I do have uh, grounds kind of going every which way in this right now. So I need to clean some of this up and uh, maybe see what's going on. But I mean, it's, it's sounding like it's gonna have a lot of output, maybe even more than I need. This is barely even up. It's just it's gonna destroy <laughs> destroy that speaker so um yeah some more work to do here but we're, we're getting closer okay so after a lot of wrangling and uh back and forth on this i finally completed it i figured out what the problem was with the uh, no voltage and it was just a matter of me not connecting the chassis ground and the b minus so i i was missing a couple of uh components these two components right here, which separate a chassis ground from a B minus in one of these uh, Widowmaker amplifiers. Yeah, with those two components in and everything properly grounded, now it's getting, of course, it's able to pull electrons from ground as it's supposed to. So this thing is, uh, it's pretty much sounding okay. Uh, I mean, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's for what it is. It's not bad. What's letting it, letting it down right now is the speaker. This speaker in this cabinet is tiny and it will fart out on you. But this has an output as well, so we'll be able to check it out in a different cabinet. So let's go ahead and put it back in this cabinet and then we'll maybe run a guitar through it and see what it sounds like. But uh, yeah, I did remove a lot of stuff, move some stuff around as well. The circuit's really entirely different. I was gonna try to keep it you know, sort of as original as possible, which I kind of did. Some of the values are, I mean, I did not clone this amp or anything. I, I used that for troubleshooting purposes so I could visualize what, what might be going on when I was having trouble there. So, um, but yeah, here's the way this works. Uh, we got power that comes in. We've, we've got a grounded cord. Uh, the grounds are all crimped off the way they're supposed to be. There is a, a core in this, which also goes to ground. Um, I believe that adding a transformer, an isolation transformer to one of these series string amplifiers like this, um, it actually bucks some noise in the sy system. Uh, and it does that kind of in the much the same way that a choke would. So anyway, we've got the got the power cord coming in. This this power switch is interesting because it actually has uh, two sides of the power switch. So both both connections are broken. It's actually a dual throw power switch. So both the uh, the hot lead and the neutral lead are, are broken whenever you throw the switch. So anyway, it comes to the switch, and I also added a fuse. Uh, you can see the fuse holder right there. And you're able to change that from the top uh, on this thing now. Usually a fuse really isn't necessary with one of these because the filaments uh, act as a fuse but when you add one of these transformers um, you want to add a fuse on the primary to make sure that the transformer doesn't short and then basically catch fire um, so added that fuse for safety purposes added this for safety purposes yeah everything is pretty much ready to go we're gonna put the uh, retainers back on the tubes get it back in this little cabinet and we'll see what she sounds like Thank you. 